Hello, this is Julia Bushkova, and today's topic is harmonics. What you just heard was the way to produce one note, in that case it was F sharp, in multitude of ways using harmonic sound. What is harmonic? I think everybody knows. It is this very special flute-like tone that string instruments are capable of producing. And Harmonics happen to be a huge topic, and I'll tell you briefly why. Uh, there is the whole portion of harmonics is physics, physics of sound. And for many it might be too difficult or too boring, and therefore they skip that part and they go to uh, application, which is how do we play those harmonics on the violin, right? And so that's when we usually discuss natural harmonics and uh, artificial harmonics and how to play them. And then a third part of the topic is notation of those harmonics. And I'm not just talking about a simple elementary notation of them, but more involved, especially when you have either double harmonics or um, when a composer, for instance, writes just the notes that he wants to or she wants to be audible and then they write harmonics over them and go figure how to play them, okay? So all of these are big subjects and I, I'm thinking that I will a little bit give you a little hint of what they are and also will direct you to many videos that do exist on YouTube already. And instead of making one huge video, most of which most people will not even watch because it will be 30 minutes long. So instead of that, we were just going a little bit into the area of harmonics, not from the very beginners, but for those of you who are already kind of acquainted what it is. So going into the natural harmonics, the vibration of the open string is from the nut to the bridge. Okay. If we lightly touch the string exactly in the middle, we get our main harmonic. Uh, it's an octave, sounds octave over your open string, right? And so forth, four of them. You can use a fourth finger, you can use a third finger, second or first. It has to be only one finger at a time. Now, we can divide that string, again, that whole length, in three equal parts. If we divide it in three equal parts, actually we'll get a harmonic that will be a fifth of the open string, and then it will sound an octave higher than that fifth, but let's just go by the fifth first. So, so here's the note of the fifth, D, A, and then lightly touching, that A becomes the fluty, a serial sound octave, one octave higher than that A. The same will be here because you can see that this distance from here to the uh, bridge is the same third as it is from nut to the finger in the lower position. All right, that is a harmonic of a fifth. If we now divide the string into four equal parts, we go to harmonic of the fourth. So the note would have been there would be this. Now harmonic will sound like this. Actually, it will sound like two octaves over the open string, in this case D. So it will match that D in harmonic sound. Wonderful. Now, does that note exist here also? Absolutely it does, because the same uh, 
the same length is there from the bridge. So therefore, sometimes we'll play it here, sometimes we'll play it there. Uh, now, middle one, by the way, stays still the same. That one doesn't change. Okay. All right, then we can actually divide the string in more and more and more and more parts. And in practical purpose, as most people know, the only other truly practical one is when we divide it in five equal spaces and then we produce harmonic of a third. Right there. So in other words, I would have played my regular F sharp. And then if I make it light, it sounds like that F sharp two octaves over. Okay, so those are harmonic of a third, interval of a third. And again, they will be existing in several places here. And that's what was the beginning of the video that you just saw. At first, there were four harmonics on the D string of F sharp. All of them were natural harmonics. I invite you to try to find them. And then, of course, we have still more partials on that string, but unfortunately, violin is so tiny, so then uh, they're not as stable as these types, the main types. Now, on a double bass, they're much more stable on cello too. So they, those instruments are capable of producing many more harmonics and we do very uh, nicely so. We, however, because they're very big and the, the lengths of the strings are big, right? And so the margin of error there is much bigger than ours. We don't have one. And so here we do have more of them uh, this is our third, major third. If you go to minor third, you actually will get that already kind of more faint sound of A. Uh, that sound being uh, over two octaves, obviously. Uh, and then some more, but again, they're very unstable. So we don't usually use them in real life, although right now I think I will, I'll try to demonstrate what's possible to find there. This is actually the upper D which uh, sometimes is there and sometimes is not, because it all depends also on the, how one um, moves the bow and just how lucky that is. So the key thing here is that if uh, the bow is closer to the bridge, we are usually luckier, so to speak. Well, not luckier, but that's where the best harmonics are produced. It's where your bow will be closer to the bridge rather than closer to the fingerboard. However, on the lower harmonics, of course, you can be closer to the fingerboard. They will still sound. But the smaller the partials, the more you should be going to the bridge. The bow obviously needs to be really, really straight. Everybody talks about that in the videos and they're absolutely right. I will repeat the same thing because if your bow isn't right, uh, they will fold. The harmonics will fold, especially these ones. This was an example of how the bow affects the pitch of the harmonic that is unstable. If I, you probably noticed, right, that I was having, like, I, I will show now on the other harmonic. So if I'm playing down bow here, and then up bow here, all you hear is a little bit of difference in timbre or color of that harmonic, right? No, doesn't change. The pitch doesn't change. However, on the other one, because it was in an unstable place, uh, it actually clearly change the pitch, all right? So that's how it's important if you are going into harder harmonics that your bow needs to be in one chosen place, moving with a chosen speed, usually in the lower to a middle part of the bow, never much at the tip, never much at the frog, and never martlet. Okay, um, so natural harmonics pretty much are this. Now, technically, of course, again, how do we place the fingers? As you probably could see, I placed every finger flat. 
not in a regular place, uh, form, shape, when fingers are curled or uh, rounded, but actually in this shape. Why? Because the surface, of course, is bigger. And also, it's harder to press them down, which you don't want to do here anyway. You don't want to depress the string whatsoever. Now, third or second, I mean, they're long fingers, so therefore, okay, if I play like this, uh, I will also go and straighten it out. Of course, if I play my harmonic in the first position, that one, I would leave the second finger in a curled shape and just lightly touch. But that's pretty much all there is about the natural harmonics. Now, what's the advantage of them? Uh, those who are sta that are stable, they usually sound really uh, clear, clean, and uh, they're easy, relatively easy to play. I mean, actually quite easy to play, honestly. Um, now, when you go into artificial harmonics, then there are more variations, variables there, but we're not going there yet. Disadvantage of the natural harmonics are two, I would say. One is that they are only in the, the they live in certain places on the string. You cannot take them in some other place. If you miss that place, it's missed. It's not there. Secondly, uh, they are uh, not my, very good with vibrato. Uh, the middle one cannot be pretty much vibrated at all. And the other ones, well, they can be, but it's, it's not a great uh, vibrato sound there. Um, and you're pretty much stuck with moving a lot around if you were to play, for instance, a scale. So if you want to play scale or an arpeggio, you will have to use a combination of natural and artificial harmonics. And for the patient and attentive ones who did stay to the end, here's some bonus material. Harmonics are most fun when they are double harmonics honestly. So I will show right now several that are doubles and we will talk about them later, but you will hear them right now. Try to find out what notes they are. That would be fun. I hope this has been helpful and entertaining. Don't forget to subscribe and like, and I will see you all later.